Now, electric vehicles, they're said to be the next big revolution. But I have always often considered how to really get started. I'm sure so have you. So many things to factor, not just the cost of the vehicle, but insurance, how much does it cost eventually, maintenance, etc, etc. So we thought, let's do a price and several other bases of comparison of a petrol and a diesel vehicle versus an EV. And we'll try and see what are the pros, what are the cons, and perhaps help you come to a decision on what is the right way to move forward. Is India ready for the EV revolution just yet? And should you and I be getting on that bandwagon? All right, so all you need to know about the EV revolution, let's get started. All right, what is that? But let's just cover some basics over here. Cars or other vehicles powered by electricity, not by fossil fuels. That's the basic definition of what an electric vehicle really is. And now let's look at the pros and cons. We'll start with the pros first. Well, there are several tax benefits when it comes to electric vehicles. There is zero or little tailpipe emission altogether. But remember, this is a bit of a area which is often talked about. People say, but emissions may be produced by the source of electric power as well, right? Well, to that, the answer is that higher ambient pollution due to fossil fuel cars is the real cause. Example, just try and imagine yourself standing at a parking lot. The emissions that you get there versus of fossil fuel cars versus what you get at electric is a totally different ball game altogether. Imagine being stuck in traffic for hours and the air that you are breathing in at that point as well. And air pollution, such a core issue to all of us right now and one that is impacting directly life of our future generation as well. Talking about that, air pollution in outdoor environment, huge plus when it comes to EVs. They are safe to drive, they have low center of gravity, more stable in case of a collision as well. And there is, of course, the big wow there is reduced noise pollution as well. I was described as one of the EV owners, a recent convert, saying that I don't even get to know when the car is actually on. It is so quiet and smooth. But having said that, there are cons on the other side as well when it comes to electric vehicles. Recharge points. Everybody knows by now, can I take it on a highway? Where will I get it? What if I get stuck in traffic for very long? This is something we'll explore uh, with our panel as well. But other cons at this time. Initial investment is quite steep compared to, to a fossil fuel uh, vehicle as well. Not that electricity is free, remember. So there is a charge that comes in there. Not suitable for cities facing shortage of power reality of India. There are fewer choices, they are expanding, but then still there are fewer choices and some governments do not provide subsidies at all at this point. So, having considered the pros and cons, looking at the environment right now, if you are one of those thinking about still going EV, what are the things to consider? Number one, the fossil fuel vehicles, their service cost increases significantly over the years. So be mindful about that while doing that comparison. Also, the fossil fuel vehicles, the fuel efficiency tends to decrease over the years. And also, these vehicles tend to be less cost efficient as they get older. As they keep saying, it's a bad investment, really. There is a depreciating cost that happens the minute you take it out on the road. And then, what about on the electric side? What are the things to consider? Well, EV has higher initial cost than fossil fuel vehicles, but the two-wheeler segment now is becoming even more affordable. Ola, they're a huge example, and they're taking a leap in that segment. EVs also have higher insurance cost, however. But let's look at this in detail. Let's look at the price game, how that pans out. We'll look at two-wheelers first. Okay, and we've taken cars both in the petrol and diesel or the fossil fuel segment and the EVs. And in the same segment, we've done a price comparison. Honda Activa, for example, the highest selling over there, 6G. It costs between 69.80 to about 78.25. Compared to in the same range, if you look at the Hero Electric two-wheeler there, it costs about 63. A Hero Splendor BS6, that costs about 63,000, but an Arthur there will cost, look at that price over there, 144,500. Huge price up in that sector. And what about cars? Well, a Maruti Swift will cost roughly about 5.73 lakh onwards, but a Tata Nexon EV, well, look at that cost over there, 13 lakh 99,000. Creta, one of the highest sellings at this point. 
over 10 lakh between the range of 10 to 18 lakh over there but a hyundai same company in the kona and their electric vehicle there will cost you over 23 lakh that's the basic price let's talk up talk about insurance and we looked at a five year insurance cost estimated there a two wheeler a honda activa again will be about 4000 where as the hero electric over there will be about 7000 again a hero splendor will be about 4250 while the electric there will be about 9000 much higher cost of insurance as well cars there let's look at that maruti suzuki swift about 19000 but the electric version will be 30550 Creta would be around 22,000, but the Hyundai Kona, the electric version, is 51,000. Let's look at price per kilometer, okay? And then the two wheelers, Honda Activa will be about 1.9 rupees, but the uh, electric version will be about 0.2 rupees. Now, this is a segment where EVs score way more than anybody else, really. A Hero Splendor will be 1.2, while the Arthur will be 0.4 three cars and this will really blow your mind maruti suzuki swift 4.8 while the tata nexon ev is 0.96 creta 5.8 while the hyundai electric is 0.8 this is assuming that we've done the price per liter of petrol being 100 and the power at this point being 10 so this is obviously this is the game changer but is it really feasible? Is this the right time to get on this bandwagon, like I said? Well